Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. You're watching South Asia Newsline. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you. India's Karnataka state votes in high stakes battle seen as 2024 warm up. Pakistan deals with aftermath of protests following ex PM Imran Khan's arrest. And Sri Lanka's top court clears path for decriminalization of homosexuality. And now for all the details. After days of high voltage campaigns, the southern Indian state of Karnataka went on to hold the crucial assembly election on Wednesday. Considered as ruling BJP's bastion in the southern region, Prime Minister Narendra Modi spearheaded the campaign for his party, addressing 19 public rallies in the state. While the main opposition Congress party has targeted the incumbent government for corruption and price rise, topics like Muslim reservation quota by the government and promise by the Congress to ban a Hindu outfit also made in roads in the election campaign. Besides this, both parties have also promised freebies to electors in their manifestos. I mean, as a democracy, we are the ones who choose the people who represent us and um, we need to be sensible in terms of choosing who would, you know, who we bring into power. So I feel it's import important for us to vote. Apart from the BJP and Congress, the regional JDS is among the main contenders. Experts believe if a hung assembly situation emerges in the elections, the regional party can play an important role. The assembly poll is also being seen as a litmus test for the BJP ahead of the 2024 general elections. The poll results are expected on 13th of May. Pakistan on Wednesday grappled with protests that erupted across the country following the arrest of former PM Imran Khan in a corruption case a day before. In various cities, buildings were burnt and debris including charred vehicles blocked roads as Khan's PTI party has called for nationwide protest. Local media reported that authorities in Punjab and Khyber Pakhtunkhwa had requested army's deployment to maintain law and order. The legal woes of former PM, however, multiplied on Wednesday when he was indicted in another case for unlawfully selling state gifts during his tenure. His arrest on Tuesday came a day after the powerful military rebuked him for repeatedly accusing a senior military officer of trying to engineer his assassination and the former army chief of being behind his ouster last year. Moving on, ad hoc employees in Pakistan-occupied Kashmir recently staged a sit-in protest to demand regularization and against the non-payment of their salaries. They also alleged several workers have been unjustly terminated without any due process. A report. A sit-in protest was held recently by ad hoc employees in Pakistan-occupied Kashmir against non-payment of their salaries and to demand regularization. They said authorities had promised to bring about a legislation to regularize them months ago. But due to no action in this regard, several of them have been terminated in the absence of any policy. The protesters said, despite being qualified, their jobs were snatched from them without due process. कानूनसाजी का अमल ना होने की वजह से 100 से ज़ायद अदालत नज़मीन फारे को चुके हैं जो मतलबा मियाद पे उतरते थे और मज़ीद जो है अगर कानूनसाजी जल्द जल्द ना की गई तो मज़ीद जो है वो हज़ार से ऊपर ऊपर अदालत नज़मीन फारे कर देंगे। तो ये हमारा मौका यहाँ पे कठिन होने का ये है कि हमें अपनी इस सर्विस का हमने लगा दिया हमें रातों रात टर्मिनेट किया गया है जैसे कि वजीरियाजम साहब ने ऐलान किया था कि हम ज़्यादा सर्विस वालों को पक्का करेंगे लेकिन उन्होंने मतलब हमें रातों रात टर्मिनेट कर दिया हमारे एक ही मुतालबा है कि हमें बहाल किया जाए हमारे साथ जितने लोग The protesters blamed that this is not the case in Pakistan where employees are regularized as per proper policies. But the people in the illegally occupied region still do not have access to equal rights and have to face exploitation. In reaction to a UN report that called the Taliban's corporal punishment methods as archaic, the Taliban-led foreign ministry has said it is obliged to follow its strict interpretation of Islamic law. 
The UN report flags concern that in the past six months alone, 274 men, 58 women and two boys were publicly flogged, calling on the interim regime to halt such practices. The report also pointed to a statement by a Taliban official who said, cutting off of hands is very necessary for security for its deterrent effect, but that the cabinet was still assessing whether punishments would be conducted in public. The first corporal punishment under the current Taliban regime was recorded from October 2021, when a man and a woman convicted of adultery by the de facto district court were publicly lashed 100 times each. The Nepal police on Wednesday arrested former Home Minister and Nepali Congress leader Bal Krishna Khand in connection to the fake Bhutanese refugee scam. A top police official said the arrest was made on the basis of statements given by those who were arrested earlier in the same case. Likewise, the police also arrested Khan's personal aide Narendra Kesi in connection with the scam. Police officials have alleged the former minister and his aide were involved in the racket of sending Nepali nationals to the US in the guise of Bhutanese refugees. Meanwhile, former Deputy PM and Leader Opposition CPN UML Top Bahadur Raimaji, indicted in the case, is absconding after a Kathmandu court issued warrant against him. Sri Lanka's Supreme Court has given the green light to a bill seeking to decriminalize homosexuality, the Speaker of Parliament said on Tuesday, in a move hailed as a historic development by campaigners. LGBTQ rights activists have been campaigning for years to change the law in a country where homosexuality is still punishable by a prison sentence and a fine, leading to the private member's bill presented in Parliament last month. Activists will still have to lobby for support from the 225 parliamentarians to push forward the proposed legislation through Parliament. Neither the government nor the opposition have made any comment on whether they will support the bill proposed for consideration by an individual member of Parliament. So the next steps for it to eventually become legislation or not are not yet clear. A cake artist in India's Pune city was honoured recently by the World Book of Records London for creating the biggest cake depicting an Indian palace. Prachi Doubledev was awarded for creating the biggest vegan royal icing structure weighing 200 kilograms. The white cake is 10 feet 1 inches in length, 4 feet 7 inches in height and 3 feet 8 inches in width. The artist said her work is inspired from various Indian palaces and is a tribute to Indian architecture. She had earlier created a record for making a Milan cathedral shaped vegan cake. Inspired from various palaces and monuments from different parts of India. If you look at the structure, you'll get glimpses of you know monuments and palaces, and all the windows and doors and the domes are inspired from various Indian palaces. And uh, so the thought was actually creating something majestic, uh, which was uh, uh, you know a tribute to Indian architecture. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.